Welcome back, thanks for tuning in. We're gonna solder on some series connectors. Some speaking controls come with their plugs installed, some do not. So for a lot of the monster trucks, they're set up for dual battery packs, or let's say you have two two cells, you wanna run those as a four cells, or two three cells that you wanna make into a six cell. You can do that by having two plugs on the speed control, and we're gonna go through all of that right now. For the most part, it's pretty simple. The positive wire of the speed control goes to the positive side of plug number one. The negative side of the speed control goes to the negative side of plug number two, and then the remaining leads get connected together. So, okay. so first things first, let's talk about the equipment we're using here. I have a set of vice grips, some wire cutters, some wire strippers. I have this nice little clamp for holding stuff. Gives you a couple different options and it's good to have a block of wood to work over so that when the solder splashes or whatever the case may be, doesn't wreck your nice mat and leave you all these sweet stains. For the vehicle that this is going in, the battery packs are gonna be on either side. It's going into an X-Max. So I'm gonna make these a little bit shorter because less wire is always a good thing. I'm gonna cut off about the same amount from each side. Something I've talked about many, many times in soldering how to's is the stripping of the wires using a pair of strippers. The idea is to go maybe one size bigger if you can, and if you can't, just don't crank down on these guys. You just need to kind of score the edge and then pop it off. And the reason is you don't want to get the wire strands that fly out and cause all sorts of problems. So at this time I did a real good job, no wire strands. And then once you strip that, you want to twist it as tight as you can. Let me just do both of these at the same time. Oh, that one I did a bad job. I got a little strand there. But if you know to look for them, you want to get them out of there and make sure that they don't stay in because they're going to cause all sorts of problems later on. When I, if you got a pair of pliers, you can lay your wires down flat like this so that when you're soldering on them, the solder doesn't wick into the wire is the idea. I like to use some spring-loaded needle nose so that I can kind of position it a little bit better. The solder that I'm using is a 6040 lead tin solder. Sometimes it can be very hard to find leaded solder due to regulations, mother nature, stuff like that. And if you can't, just make sure you have a little bit of liquid flux or flux paste, uh, rosin flux, not an acid flux. So I like to tin the wires just enough that there's sort of a layer of solder over and you can just barely see the strands individually underneath for the first round of tinning and you'll see there's going to be a lot of tinning going on here to keep everything flowing right and then i like to roll these guys a little bit to make sure that the solder kind of gravities its way all the way around if that makes any sense makes for even tinning and tinning the wires is kind of important. I've seen folks that solder without tinning. That works also. It just can require a little more technique than I'm any good at. These are AMAS branded XT90 plugs. I personally highly recommend only using these XT style or AMAS plugs. Dean's plugs and TRX plugs have been very problematic. And I appreciate more than anyone else that many of the RC world has been using those plugs for a very long time and not had any problems. But the unfortunate thing is they're starting to be problems with them. The batteries, the loads, the setups that people are using for RC cars these days are a bit more than those uh, plugs can handle. So put a little bit of solder in there, not too much. I got the wires tinned completely. And usually right before I go to hit this, I re-tin the wire just a little bit. The fresh solder seems to help everything keep flowing. And then this is my in the field technique where I just do this all on the table. It's super pro. Oh, you know what I just did? I forgot the insulator, so I gotta take this off. These guys gotta go on. I hope that this shows up. Hot things right next to your delicate little office hands. Stupid. All right, so positive wire on the speed control goes to the positive on the first connector, and then the negative wire will go on the negative of the second connector. It's pretty straightforward. Tin this, and it's not much. It's just like maybe a layer, just to give it something to 
uh, flow. It just helps to flow everything. Solder is a very bad conductor. It's made out of poor materials that melt and it's used just to hold the wires in place. So you wanna kinda have as little solder as possible just to get everything flowing into position and then make sure that you apply some pressure so the wire goes through the solder and sits all the way down on the metal part of the connector. And then I just like to have clean surfaces on the top so there's not a bunch of pockets for stuff to build up and sit in. So negative wire on the second plug. Oh, I did it again. Stupid. Don't forget the insulators, dummy. The big wires conduct a lot of heat. Iron is set to probably 700, 800, it's probably 850 degrees. The dial on my iron is, hasn't been accurate for many years. So it's cranked all the way up. And then I'm gonna do a jumper between these two. And the way this sits in the truck, the plugs just kind of go right here. So I don't want this to be very long. So I'm gonna try to measure that out to about there. So these guys come together, they both make a turn. Ka-chow, right about there. Another one, you, when you, if you can do the uh, twist to the insulation as you remove it, that helps grab the strands. Sometimes they'll get stuck in the insulation. And then this side has solder on it already, but I'm gonna cut this off because it's gonna be different than the solder that I'm using. And it's that factory leaded solder that everybody likes so much. Again, I just, I try not to crank on the, the strippers, the wire strippers, because it generally cuts the, the strands, and you don't want that. I, think, I know I keep saying that, but it's kind of important. I've seen the wire strands cause lots of problems, and I'm, I'm twisting and throwing the strands off to the side so that they don't get into stuff later. And this gets a little bit more. You generally need to strip off from the wire a little bit more than the thickness of the wire so that the surface that you solder it to is at least as big as the wire. So now, this guy needs to go through here. And we're gonna tin this wire. So again, with the tinning, just like one thin kind of overcoat, if you will so that you can just barely make out the individual strands of the wire. And then this one did well. I'll just give it a little roll like this. It gets painted evenly all the way across. So this one, now that this wire is soldered on there, you can kind of hold the plug in place with the other wire, which is nice because your fingers aren't so close to the hot steel. So a little bit of solder right before I get started. And then usually you can just lay this on there and done, just like that. Sometimes you give it a little twist too, to make sure that the strands all stay nice and tight. You don't want the wires fraying out and the solder getting in there, that's all bad. And now that those guys both look good, always look at them a second time. I mean, I know we all think that we're pro soldering experts, but just take a visual, you'll see if something's wrong. Then this one, just go through here. Give this guy a fresh twist. Oh, see, got an extra strand out. All right, next wire, same thing. More tinning, do I need to say it again? I'm not gonna say it. sinks down into the solder, a little tiny twist there, it's gonna need another one. Black wire and a positive lead, that's always fun. So to make sure you've done this correctly, you have, oh, 
we'll just look at it all real quick here. This is positive, this is negative on the connectors, two different ones, one to each wire of the speed control, and then the remaining ones are connected together. That is basic series connection. Uh, just a refresh solder and iron that I use. I like the chisel tip because it's nice and large for these big gauge wires and you have a small skinny edge for the small gauge wires as well. It's set to 800 degrees, give or take. I use a 6040 rosin core lead leaded solder if I can. It's lead and tin. If you have to use the high silver or the lead free solder, uh, do yourself a favor, get yourself a little flux uh, so that it makes the solder flow a little bit easier. I always clean my iron. I've been doing this for years with basically just a, 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 a moist sponge. Some people say that's good. Some people say it's bad. You're supposed to use all sorts of different things. I, I, I've been doing that for a minute. And don't forget, uh, you want the wires to not float in solder. It should be contacting the whatever metal surface of the plug that you're soldering to. And your wires, if they're bigger than the surface of your plug, the plug's gonna be too small. So you wanna make sure that your plugs are bigger than the gauge wire that you're using on max fives, max sixes, max eights. Probably XT90s is a good place to start for most people, so. When you solder, Wear eye protection and work in a well-ventilated area. Solder smoke will shorten your life drastically and solder splashes and wires flick around and solder goes everywhere. So be very, very careful when it comes to that sort of stuff. This ain't no joke. It's molten metal for crying out loud. Once again, thanks for tuning in, everybody. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. See you next time. Man, I never used the vice the whole time. I just used my cheater method. Nor did I use the vice grips. Way, way to go. I used a block of wood, this, and my sweet, sweet wire strippers.